My dear friends in Christ, very many years ago, as a kid in primary school those days, I usually walked to school and I walked back home after school. And one day, while school had closed, I was going home and I noticed that there was water towards the ending of the street. I was at the beginning of the street and I could see Looking down the road, I felt that there was a river ahead of me, and so I became scared. I stood there, and I kept looking at this river, and I stood there for some time. The road was empty. Nobody was coming, and nobody was going. I didn't want to move. I started wondering, how could there be a river at the end of the road until... After some, after some time, I think perhaps maybe up to an hour, a car came by and drove down that same road that I thought that there was a river. And behold, I looked at the car driving into the river and I didn't see any water there. And the car came out and turned towards the other direction and the whole place was clear. So I summoned courage and I decided to walk down. As I was getting closer to the river, the river was disappearing. <laughs> you see, what happened to me that back then is what is called a mirage. You think that something is there, but it's not really there. It was just a reflection of the sun. And I was interpreting the reflection of the sun, which I was seeing as a river. There was no water on the road. That is another way of explaining the term hypocrisy. When people give the impression that they are there, meanwhile, they are not really there. And Jesus Christ condemned hypocrisy. We also must avoid hypocrisy at all costs. We must avoid giving the wrong impression of ourselves yes it is one thing to strive for perfection and if you are good there's no way people will not notice but it's a different thing altogether when you are not even making efforts to be good but you want people to think that you are good with these words i welcome you to today's episode of the liturgy of the word with Father Evaristus Ege Meyo Abu. Today is the second day of June. It is a Friday. And today is the Friday of the eighth week in ordinary time. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, King of kings and Lord of lords, as we, your children, study your words today, Grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from the book of Sirach, chapter 44, verses 1, verses 9 to 13. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 149, while our gospel passage today is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Mark chapter 11, verses 11 to 26. The first reading, a reading from the book of Sirach. Let us now praise famous men and our fathers in their generations. There are some who have no memorial, who have perished as though they had not lived. They have become as though they had not been born, and so have their children after them. But these were men of mercy, whose righteous deeds have not been forgotten. Their prosperity will remain with their descendants and their inheritance to their children's children. 
their descendants stand by the covenants, their children also for their sake. Their posterity will continue forever, and their glory will not be blotted out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing a new song to the Lord. His praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in its maker. Let Zion's children exult in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the poor with salvation. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in their glory and rejoice as they take their rest. Let the praise of God be in their mouths. This is an honor for all is faithful. The Lord takes delight in his people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the Lord, alleluia, alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the Lord. Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I chose you from the world that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, says the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus entered Jerusalem amid acclamations from the crowd and went into the temple. And when he had looked round at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it, and they came to Jerusalem. And he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons, and they would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. And he taught and said to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And the chief priests and the scribes heard it, and sought a way to destroy him, for they feared him, because all the multitude was astonished at his teaching. And when evening came, they went out of the city. As they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, 
Master, look, the fig tree which you cast as withered. And Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you receive it and you will. And whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph. From today's gospel passage, we can see that two things that can hinder our prayers from being answered is faith. Lack of faith can be an hindrance to your prayers. Jesus says, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you will receive it. Whoever asks anything and does not doubt in his heart, he will get it. If you don't doubt, you will get it. How can you be praying to God at the same time be having this feeling that you are just, you're just, you're just praying to yourself or that God cannot do what you are asking for? Avoid doubt. It is an obstacle to prayer. Second obstacle to prayer is forgiveness, lack of forgiveness. He said, whenever you stand in prayer, please forgive those who have offended you so that your own sins will be forgiven too and so that what you're asking for will be granted to you. Is it easy to forgive? No, it's not easy to forgive, but we must make effort. We must make effort to overlook the wrongs and the offenses of others. Whether we like it or not, people will offend us. And we tend to react to this. We will always want to do things that will prevent them from hurting us again and again. And sometimes we want to let them know that we are hurt. So that they themselves will be more careful next time. Nevertheless, do not let the sun set on your anger. Do not be angry forever. Give people a second chance. Give people another opportunity, another chance. Remain the relationship. Let go of the past. Take it that perhaps they didn't know what they were doing when they offended you. You need this. You need to do this. It's not easy to forgive, but we need to be able to forgive because we want God to forgive our sins. We want God to answer our prayers. You may wonder, why did Jesus curse the fig tree? And this takes us back to the message I gave at the introduction, hypocrisy. The fig tree was covered with leaves. Jesus was hungry. And because the fig tree was with leaves, even though it was not the season of figs, but the fact that there were leaves in it, when they were not supposed to be leaves in it, made Jesus curious. Because when there are leaves in the fig tree, it is a sign that there is a fruit. So for this tree to have leaves, even though it was not the season for figs, the tree was attractive to Jesus. The, tr the tree drew the attention of Jesus. But when Jesus Christ got to the tree, he discovered that there was no fruit in it. He was disappointed because that tree only drew his attention, only to get nothing. Just like I thought there was a river along the street, only to realize that there was no river there. It was just an imagination or uh, uh, it was just a mirage. Some Christians are like that. We are mirage. From the outside, we look very attractive. But deep down within, there's nothing. We want people to think of us in a good light. 
and we are not making efforts to become what we want them to think of us. So some Christians are very pretensive. They pretend a lot. They are not, for instance, let me give an example with what we were just talking about. I said two things that can prevent your prayers from being answered. Number one, lack of faith. And number two, lack of forgiveness. We're talking about the need to forgive as a Christian. We need to forgive. But there are some Christians that they pretend as if they've not been hurt. When you hurt them, they pretend as if all is good. Meanwhile, they carry bitterness in their heart. They will not talk. They will not quarrel. They will just keep on smiling with you, but they are bitter with you in their heart. That is even worse. It is, it is, it is worse than not forgiving. Because that is pretense. That is uh, a, a fake, putting up uh, a fake smile. So this person is smiling with you, and yet is not happy with you. And he does not want to tell you that he's not happy with you. And he keeps on, you keep seeing this person every day. And the person cannot, does not tell you. Only for you to assume that all is well, then one day, one day, when you are least expecting, this person will strike you down. This is what many Christians do. And it is hypocrisy. It is hypocrisy. If, if someone offends you as a Christian, let the person know. React to it. Let the person know that this thing I have done is wrong. Such that the person can either come to you to say, I am sorry. And then there is a reconciliation. Or you yourself, you are the one hurt. You go and tell this person, you hurt me today and I'm not happy with it. I'm not happy at what you did today. And this is what you did. This is what you did. This is what you did. And then there will be reconciliation. There's forgiveness easily. But it's not the case that someone has offended you. And then you just pretend like that fig tree. You cover with leaves. You know, when there are leaves, green leaves, it is, it is, it is always attractive. You remain very attractive. You don't react. They offend you today. You don't react. Offend you tomorrow. You don't react. Offend you next tomorrow, you don't react, but you are boiling deep down within you. Let us stop that. Let us avoid that. Just as the, Jesus Christ cast down the fig tree for, for, for pretending to have fruit and not having fruit, we can incur the wrath of God by pretense, pretending to be good. Meanwhile, we are not good. Still, in our gospel passage today, Jesus Christ went into the temple and he saw that the father's house had become a den of robbers. It was not a place of worship any longer. It had become a den of robbers. That takes us back to the theme of hypocrisy we are talking about. Many Christians today have turned the church into a business enterprise. So it is not God that they come to church to worship. It is money that they worship in church. So everything about church has become business. It has become business. Jesus Christ said, no, this cannot go on. It's supposed to be a place of prayer, a place that people come in to worship God. But now people come in to buy and sell. And Jesus Christ had to cleanse the temple and drove all the money changers out. Jesus Christ was not gentle with this. Jesus Christ did not pretend you know, as many, 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 many will, will, will assume that, yeah, you just have to pretend. You just have to be diplomatic. Jesus Christ was not diplomatic. He was hungry and he showed his anger. He displayed his annoyance. And he told them the reason why he is doing what he is doing. This is supposed to be a place of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of robbers. A pretensive Christian will just come and smile, smile at everybody, make everybody think that all is well, well, all is not well. Wow. Uh, as we can see, may God bless his words in our heart, and may the blessings of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. Thanks for listening.